Tonight on The Readout. Anybody who was involved in that corrupt, shady, shoddy election of 2020. Lock them up. It is primary night in five states, highlighting lies like that one from Carrie Lake and other candidates who are trying to get their hands on the key offices overseeing voting. And make no mistake, democracy itself is on the ballot. Also on the ballot today, reproductive rights in Kansas. A referendum there would strip women of their right to choose unless enough people vote no. And we all know Speaker Nancy Pelosi is a badass. Well, she arrived in Taiwan today, even though China is furious about the trip. Plus, Trevor Reed, the former Marine who spent three years behind bars in Russia and is now speaking out for the release of Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan joins me right here tonight. But we begin with a huge night of primaries in some key battleground states. Voters in five states are casting their ballots, setting up critical showdowns for this November. And the stakes could not be higher. The choices voters make could very well determine whether or not this country remains a democracy. And that claim is not made hyperbolically. We all saw how our democracy was pushed to the brink in 2020, with the twice impeached former president continuing to push the big lie that the election he lost was rigged. Of course, it wasn't. And how he unleashed a violent mob on the Capitol in a Hail Mary attempt to remain in power after systematically going state by state to pressure lawmakers to bend to his will and change the election outcomes. Now, fortunately for the country, there were enough elected leaders in those states unwilling to bend the knee to Trump, including a handful of Republicans. But in the next presidential election, we might not be so lucky. That is because a group of MAGA fanatics spouting the big lie and willing to overturn their own state's election results are making a run for the very positions that kept our country intact. In fact, many have already won the Republican Party nominations to run for governor and secretary of state in states across this country, with more possibly on the way, including tonight. Arizona, which has a full slate of Trump endorsed election deniers in position to see some wins when the polls close, including the leading Republican candidate for governor, Carrie Lake, who has gone all in on the big lie, even calling for the imprisonment of Arizona's top election official for her handling of the 2020 race and for the jailing of journalists over what she calls or what she claims are election lies. Now, Lake is taking a page out of Trump's playbook, claiming even before Election Day that there's fraud in the voting without providing any proof, because, of course. What I'm fraud is there, Carrie? What fraud is there? This is serious. Do you want to make this about you? No, you I, and this is about the Arizona last, voters and their faith in this election. The last person on the planet Earth I would tell about what they have done for So you know about a crime, and yet you're not reporting it to authorities. And I'm not telling you about when are you? Guess what you discovered is nothing, ma'am. OK, well, there is also state rep Mark Fincham vying for Arizona secretary of state. Now, this is a person who once identified himself as a member of the Oath Keepers and was present outside the Capitol on January 6th. To this day, he is still pushing the state legislature to overturn the state certification of the 2020 presidential election. And Fincham is credited by January 6th rally organizer Ali Alexander as the singular force behind the Stop the Steal movement in Arizona. This is the person who wants to be put in charge of overseeing the state's elections. Of course, these are only a few examples of the extreme candidates who already are or will likely be on the ballot in November and who could actually find themselves in positions of power in 2024. Joining me now, national political correspondent Steve Kornacki at the big board, as always on election nights, and Alex Wagner, host of the upcoming Alex Wagner Tonight, which premieres two weeks from this very night, August 16th at 9 p.m. Eastern, right here on MSNBC. Thank you both for being here. But I'm going to start with you, Steve. Give us the state of play uh, as we know it now. Yeah, well, Arizona, it'll be late tonight. It'll be about 11 o'clock Eastern when we start getting numbers there. Just by the way, the way things work in Arizona, it'll probably be within the first 10, 15 minutes of those polls closing that we get more than half the vote statewide. You get all, all one big batch there uh, in Arizona. So we won't know anything until late. But when we start to get some numbers, 
We might know a lot quick. So what are we seeing here in Arizona? Well, you mentioned there's the Senate race here. This is for the Republican nomination to take on Mark Kelly, the Democrat seeking re-election in Arizona this November. Blake Masters has led in the polls. Blake Masters is running with Donald Trump's endorsement. So then again, that gets to the question of will the complete Trump slate of Republican primary candidates in Arizona get through? Blake Masters is Trump's candidate for the United States Senate. As you mentioned, Carrie Lake is Trump's candidate for the Republican nomination for governor. She, too, has led in the polling, although there was a final Emerson poll in the last 72 hours that did suggest maybe a closer race here. So perhaps a bit of suspense at the end of this race here. Uh, Carrie Lake, though, the Trump-backed candidate for governor. Also, you just mentioned Mark Fincham, secretary of state. The possibility here is of all the swing states in the country, if these Trump-aligned, Trump, Trump-backed candidates win their primaries tonight in Arizona, Arizona will be fielding a slate of Republican candidates that is more in tune with Trump on the 2020 question than any other Republican Party in any other swing state in the country. And I think that raises an important question for November. And again, it has to do with Mark Kelly, the incumbent Democrat seeking reelection. Democrats need Kelly to win to hold on to the United States Senate, to really have a chance to hold on to the United States Senate. This is a crucial race for Democrats to win. Remember, it was a Biden state in 2020, Arizona, but the margin was three tenths of one point. And given where Biden stands in the polls right now, given how midterm elections usually play out, they usually favor the opposition party, work against the White House party. Kelly on paper is an extremely vulnerable incumbent. The question is, though, if Republicans nominate this Trump aligned slate top to bottom in Arizona, does that give the swing voters who might otherwise turn on an incumbent like Kelly in a year like 2022? Does that give them pause? And does that keep them from voting for Republicans? And does that give Kelly a chance in Arizona, a better chance in Arizona? And does that give Democrats a better chance of hanging on to the United States Senate? So it'll be really interesting to watch these Republican primaries play out uh, in Arizona tonight to see if that full Trump slate is indeed successful. Really quickly, Steve, just a quick follow up, because, you know, Donald Trump is has been selecting candidates uh, in these Republican primaries who I think most objective observers would say are probably the weaker choice um, for Republicans in places like Georgia and Pennsylvania, et cetera. In the state of Arizona, is there a sense of how Trumpy the electorate is? Because in some of these other swing states, the, 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 the chances of the Democrat prevailing are actually being increased by Donald Trump's picks becoming the nominees. Yeah, well, like I said, Arizona, the margin was three-tenths of one point for Joe Biden in 2020. So, yeah, it was a blue state in 2020. Yes, Biden was able to carry it, but three-tenths of one point, the, the, about 9,500 votes. It was under 10,000 votes. So it was comparable, I would say, in terms of just how close it was to Georgia. So you're not looking at a, a, a huge sort of surplus of Republican votes, you know, where it is not a deeply, deeply, you know, red state here. So this is a state that, you know, went Democratic by a whisker in, in 2020. Um, Republicans certainly under a normal, as I say, normal midterm conditions, sort of a generic Republican candidate, I think, might even be favored in Arizona. But there is a question by Biden's victory of Can you push that electorate too far? And I think that we might be set up to have that test in November. Steve Kornacki, you're the best. Thank you very much. Really appreciate you. And Steve will be at the big board throughout the evening with results from today's primaries. We'll definitely be keeping up with that. Alex, I want to bring you in here because, you know, I I think about Arizona. This is a state up until, you know, this was the Barry Goldwater state. That's how Republican the state was. This was John McCain state. It had two Republican senators pretty much my whole lifetime. Uh, And I'm not that old, but I'm not that young. And now it has two Democratic senators, two, not one, but two. This is a state that swung from all the way from the Goldwater Republican all the way to being a blue state right now in terms of its its representation in the United States Senate. So what do you make of this idea that the Republicans are still taking the knee and essentially nominating people who are so far in the Trump wing that they could actually make it bluer? I think that the term is schadenfreude, Joy, which is democratic (laughs) delight, right? But at the same time, I think we it's important to step back for a second and look at this in the context of America, right? 
We're a two party system. And if one of those parties is hopelessly broken, populated by, you know, people who are for I'm not even kidding when I say this, gov- people who are running for the governorship in Michigan, who were former stars of vampire web TV series, played characters were eaten by zombies and are now front runners. Tudor Dixon is the person I'm speaking of in Michigan for the Republican Party. That's a problem for democracy, right? If you have a two party system and one party doesn't work, that makes it very hard to get the business done. And when you look at the landscape of some of these people, I mean, the the qualifications that they are promoting should be disqualifications. Carrie Lake, the woman that you're talking about in Arizona, this is a woman who for 22 years is a broadcaster at the local Fox News affiliate. I will say that again, the Fox News affiliate. She's seen as kind of a middle of the road broadcaster. Sometimes she donates to campaigns like Obama. And then in 2018, 2019, 2020, it all turns and she becomes a QAnon conspiracist. Last year, she disavows the fourth estate. She walks away from the newsroom and she turns what could have been a a liability among Republican voters, which is to say her work as a journalist, into an asset by virtue of the condemnation. It is a testament to the anti-democratic norms of the GOP that you can't get to the top of the ticket if you're a journalist unless you disavow the fourth estate. And I won't get into all the other candidates, but I mean, we're talking about people that that would never have had careers in politics are now the front runners for the Republican Party in important and key races in key states. Now, that could be good news for Democrats, but is it good news for democracy?